You ready to be fed? Yes. Amen. James chapter 2. Continue our study in the book of James. Study in maturity and we will hopefully finish up James's thoughts and teaching as regard as it regards the respect of persons there in verses 8 through 13 we'll run as fast as as far as we can as fast as we can before my time runs out tonight James chapter 2 and verse number 8 If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect of persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as a transgressor. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Father, we thank you for your word tonight, praying, Lord, that you will bless this time. And speak to our hearts in a special way. For Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Over these past few weeks, we have talked about the sin of, of being a respecter of persons. We have seen this sin defined and demonstrated by the Apostle James. And we have seen, the, the, seen this sin's heinousness last week. And... Here in our text in verses 8 through 13, we see the remedy of being a respecter of persons. How do we not be a respecter of persons? James tells us here. James, con- James condemns the church's sin concerning respecter of persons. And now he teaches them and directs them to be able to do right. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 28... The Bible says there in Colossians 1 and verse 28. Paul, speaking of Christ, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, complete or mature in Christ Jesus. And that is... What James is doing here to his audience of Jews that he is writing to. He is teaching them, directing them to do right. As the word of God does for us. In verse 8, we find there, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor and thyself as thyself, ye do well. We find that the law is a guide and is to guide them and us in our treatment of people. Two great commandments Jesus gave in the Gospels. They were, love God, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. The second, love thy neighbor as thyself. The great commandment is part of the royal law. James calls it. The royal law there in verse number 8. <clears throat> this is one of the two commandments that Jesus gave. That hangs, Jesus said, all the law and the prophets. Now James is not defending the poor against the rich. Or the rich against the poor. And as he mentions in the previous verses that we've looked at. But James is teaching that there should be no improper conduct toward anyone. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love all people equally. 
as we would love ourselves. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty fond of myself. Most people are when it comes right down to it. They shouldn't, they shouldn't hate or be rude to the rich or look down at the poor. And we as believers need to let God's word govern our conduct toward all people. God's word should govern our conduct as believers in Christ, always, in all things. The scripture here, the scripture here gives us this law to love our neighbor as ourselves, and it reminds, and this law remains in effect. This law even becomes elevated and is made more important by Christ, the one who gave the law. Through his commandment of this law and his example of following it, he elevates this law. You look at the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ as it is portrayed in the Gospels. He treated everyone the same. Forgave everyone equally. Merciful and compassionate to everyone equally. He ate with the publicans and the sinners. He ate with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The rich and the poor. Always the same. And, this, and since this law comes from the king of kings, it is a royal law. This law is a law that makes people free. It is the law of liberty, for it has to do with the gospel. The gospel is the law of liberty. The word that should govern what we do and what we say. There are those who would interpret this law, love thy neighbor as thyself, with partiality. Do you remember the lawyer in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10 that asked Christ who was his neighbor? Which prompted the story of the Good Samaritan? What was that man trying to do? He was trying to justify himself. He was trying to See, if Christ would say, well, I can treat this person like my neighbor, but not this person like my neighbor. Because I like this person more than this person. But that's not what Christ told him. And that's not what Christ taught in the parable of the Good Samaritan. But there were those who, who would interpret love thy neighbor as thyself with partiality. They would treat especially the rich with favor and flattery because they were expecting them to treat them the same way. Ah, they're a caveat. They're a workaround. See, the Pharisees were very good at that when it came to the law. But it didn't make them right. This, and this should not excuse them of their sin of partiality. See, James now makes the general law of love thy neighbor as thyself more specific. For he gives them what is found in the book of Leviticus. Front of your Bible, third book of your Bible, in chapter 19. Just in case you're like me, when you do your reading your Bible through the year, you read through Leviticus quickly. Leviticus is a detailed book of God's law. And in verse number 15 of Leviticus chapter 19, Leviticus 19 and verse 15... The Bible tells us this. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not 
respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. The, the specific law is given to us here. It's given to us by the Lord, a royal law. All the law that is given was given by God, was it not? It makes it royal. And it rightly explained, and the royal law rightly explained this loving your neighbor as yourself, looking at all equally, treating everyone equally. And this would serve as a conviction to the hearts of the audience that James was writing to, who were respecter of persons. This would bring conviction to them. It teaches them to put themselves as much as possible in the shoes of the poor and the rich. That James is talking about. Walk a mile in their shoes. Whose ever shoes? Someone going through sickness and sorrow. Walk a mile in their shoes. Think about what they go through. Those who are suffering with spiritual problems, walk a mile in their shoes. One of the reasons why we're so ineffective with witnessing is because we've forgotten what it is to be lost. Right? We have. And even though I've been saved for over 40 years, it's really not that long ago that I was lost without Christ. We forget where we came from. My friends, we should never forget where we came from. Because if we forget where we came from, then we have no idea where we're going. Past is a great predictor of the future and helps us to get through the present. And we must not forget where we came from. We would treat everyone equally if we did. We see in verse 10, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. James here to show the extent of this royal law that he has reminded his readers about, how it must be obeyed, They, as we, need to regard one part of the law as well as the other. Otherwise, it wouldn't be their actions James teaches them in this case. That they plead their respecter of persons because they are to love their neighbor as themselves. He would ask them, if you're giving favoritism to the rich, why don't you then show equal respect to the poor? If you're to love your neighbor as yourself, why don't you do that? Because if you don't follow the whole law, then you don't follow the law at all. If you follow the whole law, verse 10 says, yet offend in how many points? One. As I've mentioned many times, you only have to break one law to be a lawbreaker. You don't have to break a lot. And it's the same with the law of God. You only have to break one to break the law of God. You ought to break them all. And to do so willfully and to do so continually. And to think 
the audience of James that they would be excused from their offense because they keep other areas of the law. Some people think that way. You ever hear a person rationalize their sin? Have you ever rationalized your sin? Yep. We do that. Well, you know, I told my wife this little white lie, but, you know, that's not as bad as the time that I... You know, took candy bars from the convenience store. Or I lied to my parents. Things such as that. Any way you slice it, I lied. And that's how God looks at it. Any way you slice it. We, don't ra- we can't rationalize our sin. We can't say that this is worse than this because it's not. Offend in one point. Guilty of all. But that's what James's audience was trying to do. If you break the law, you pay the same penalty, liable for the same punishment, sentenced by the same law as if they had broken it in other areas. As well as what they were charged with. Not that all sins are equal, because believe it or not, there is a degree of sin. And unbelief is the worst sin. And the unbelievers will one day be in the lake of fire and brimstone with Satan for all eternity. But then there are those that will go to heaven and they will be saved yet so as by fire with no reward. But they will be saved. There is a difference. Not that, all sin, not that all sins are equal, but that they carry the same contempt of the authority of the lawgiver. They were showing their contempt to God by breaking his law. And we do the same when we break God's law. We show our contempt for the one who gave the law. That doesn't apply to me. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Said God. (laughs) We'll see. And it's foolish to think that our good deeds will atone for our bad deeds. Because they don't. This is illustrated for us in verse 11. For he, in James chapter 2 and verse 11, for he that said do not commit adultery also said do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. If the law given by God says, do not commit adultery and do not kill, there may be someone who would condemn adultery more than murder, and someone who would condemn murder more than adultery. Again, that rationalization thing. Yet if you commit one or the other, you're still... transgress the law of God, right? Offend in one point. Verse 10 says, guilty of all. But if we look at the, uh, if we look at the authority of the lawgiver, 
more than the commands themselves, we see that the lawgiver has the same reason for condemning both. They were disobedient to God. Had contempt for the lawgiver in breaking whatever law. Obedience is then accepted. And obedience is then acceptable when practiced with an eye on the will of God. What's your motivation for being obedient to the word of God? Is it fear? Not a great way to live, is it? Is it love? It should be. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We should be obedient, motivated out of love, love for God. Love for others. We should also be motivated to be obedient so that we will do the will of God. So that when we stand before God one day, he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you have done my will. You have done what I've asked you to do. And disobedience is to be condemned because it shows that contempt for the lawgiver. Together, or therefore, if we offend in one point, we condemn the authority of God, the lawgiver. And that makes us guilty of all is our contempt when we break God's law. And James now teaches us to live and conduct ourselves by the law of Christ. And this teaches us to be just and impartial to every person. See, the gospel is a law. It has teachings with rewards. It has punishments for disobedience. It tells the believer their duty and brings comfort. And Christ is the king, is a king who rules us. Does he not? He is a prophet who teaches us, is he not? He's a priest who sacrifices himself for us and makes intercession for us at the throne of God. He is all these. And we are under the law of Christ as believers in Christ. According to 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 21. This law, as mentioned, is a law of liberty. There in verse number 12. It's a law of liberty because, our ser- because of our service to God, to God according to the gospel. And that service is a perfect freedom. The gospel makes us free. Free from sin, free from death, free from hell, free from the grave. Free from bondage. That sin brings with it. It frees us from the slavery of sin. And frees us from the obligations to the world. And when we stand before that judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged by that law of liberty. This law of liberty by the word. As we stand before him, the word that was made flesh. So we need to act and speak as becometh 
the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27, Philippians 1 and verse 27, Only let your conversation, your manner of life, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. When people see our life, they should see Christ and see his gospel and see his love and his grace and his mercy in all that we do, in all that we say. That whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And because we are judged by the gospel, we need to love our neighbor as ourselves. We need to do it more and we need to do it better. Because... Verse 13 tells us there. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. To the unrepentant sinner will be judged by God. And they will be judged by God without mercy. Mercy. You read through Revelation, you read through the tribulation period of that seven years. Is there any mercy there? Hard to see, isn't it? It's not much at all. The only mercy you could probably find there is the 144,000 that will go out to share the gospel to those who have never heard and those who will be saved during that time. That's the only mercy you're going to see. But if they're unrepentant, shaking their fist at God, God will show them no mercy. And those who show no mercy will find no mercy in that great day of judgment. But those who will show mercy to others, God will show them mercy. See, all people in the last day will either be vessels of wrath or vessels of mercy. Which one will you be? I pray it's a vessel of mercy. Pray it starts now. To show mercy to others. Remember, Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We must love our neighbor as ourselves and love God above all else. And if we do, we will have no problems playing favorites or having respective persons. Appreciate your time and your attention. Um, two weeks.